Hi all, it's me Ryan here. Today we'll be taking a look at the Astron B450M Steel Legend. It was released at the start of this year, around January. So let's jump right in with the unique features of this board. Let's go! There is quite a large amount of RGB on the board compared to other B450 boards in this price range, with RGB on the chipset heatsink and on the I.O. cover. This board being a mini ITX board supports two M.2 slots, one NVMe one and the latter being a SETA. Now, for the cost of the board, in Singapore, it costs 155 SGD on Lazada, with a free RGB strip, as it's coming straight from its distributor, Tank Dynamic. In the US, it costs $89.99 in USD at the time on filming from Amazon. Link for both will be in the descriptions down below. So now, what do you get with the board? Well, this will be the first thing you'll see as it's all thrown on top of the motherboard in the box. They are your SATA cables, your camo looking IO shield, two M.2 screws, motherboard CD, a guide to install your RAM modules, a warranty guide, quick installation guide, a postcard and software guide. Depending on your vendor, you may also get an RGB strip. Now for internal connectors or ports. Starting from the bottom left, you'll see your front audio connectors, your first ARGB connector, your RGB connector, TPM connector, COM port connector, two USB 2.0 ports, clear CMOS jumper, two chassis fan connectors, chassis intrusion connector, and your two front panel connectors. One of them is for your speakers, and the other one is for your not traditional buttons and lights. From the right side up, there are two two banks of SATA 3 connectors, USB 3.0 connector, 24 pin power, and right at the top is the CPU cooler LEDs for connecting something like a prism cooler or let's say a RGB strip. Last of all, next to your RAM slots are your CPU fan connector and water pump connectors. Near to your PCIe X4 slot is another fan connector for your exhaust fan. For rear I.O., you have two USB 2.0 ports on top of a PS2 port, display port 1.2, HDMI port 2, two banks of USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, RJ45 LAN port, followed by two USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A, followed by Type-C port. Last of all are your audio ports. The looks on the board is quite nice, with mostly a black and white color scheme. This is common with most boards nowadays. Thus, it fit with most modern hardware in the market today. There's also a camel theme on the board. So if you say you want to buy components, you might want to bear that in mind. So in terms of RAM choices, you could go for something like the G-Skill Sniper X DDR4 RAM at 3200 MHz. This flows well with the board. The RGB lighting on the board is also quite good and very bright giving you illuminations for your build, so to bring the ambient light up in the build a lot more. It's controllable via software or the BIOS, which is quite interesting, as I'll show you now. For two things they can improve on, one would be the packaging, as having everything loosely tossed about in the box is a bit dangerous for the motherboard during shipping, as it could break the board, if your safe is handled really roughly. Second thing is, it would be nice to see a debug LED on the board or maybe a post screen to show you whether it is stuck at a certain... So let's say if your build has some issues and you can't post, maybe it give you a debug LED or something like that to tell you what is wrong, as that will help a lot. Overall, it's quite obvious where majority of the budget is spent. Not really on the packaging, as the packaging is not really that great. It's mostly spent on the motherboard itself with the lighting and the unique features of the board. It has decent features such as any B450 board, but with added functionality such as the two display outputs on the board. This is great for people who will want to use a budget system which has a 3600G or 2200G or 2400G and don't really want to spend. Hence the target audience will be people who are budget gamers, they just want RGB lights and performance at the same time without having to buy a graphics card as the normal Ryzen processors without the G on it doesn't have integrated graphics. I hope this video helped you all. If you do, leave a like, subscribe, share, comment down below, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.